Hello, uh, welcome to the presentation about translating the most used media wiki messages, uh, the success stories and the improvements. So my name is Amira Aroni and uh, with me today here are two uh, excellent uh, translators, excellent Wikimedia contributors, Sadiq Shahadu and uh, Levi Kambai Akau. Uh, I will quickly introduce them. Uh, Sadiq is the organizer of the Dagbani Wikimedians uh, user group in Ghana, uh, also the ambassador for indigenous communities and art and feminism, a contributor to uh, media wiki translation and translate wiki and to the Dagbani Wikimedia incubator, which will soon graduate and become a full fledged edition of Wikipedia in the Dagbani language. Uh, and uh, Levi Kambai Akau is from Nigeria. He is a speaker of the Tiap language. He is a um, prolific contributor to uh, the translation of uh, the MediaWiki software into Tiap on TranslateWiki. Uh, we'll speak in a few uh, moments about how prolific. Uh, he's also a lexicographer of uh, Tiap. Um, and uh, we will probably, we probably won't able to hear uh, come by, unfortunately, for technical reasons, but uh, I'll try to present uh, what he was about to say um, uh, myself. And uh, he will make a separate video. Uh, we hope it works uh, for that. Uh, we are sorry about this little inconvenience, but the content I promise will be very interesting. So uh, we will start with uh, Sadiq's part uh, about uh, translating the most used uh, media wiki messages into Dagbani. So uh, Sadiq, the uh, stage is yours. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Sadiq Shahadu. Um, thank you for joining our session. Um, in this part, I'll be talking more about how we manage to complete the most commonly used messages on MediaWiki, translating them into the Dagwani language. Um, we, I would like to talk about our journey, how we started. So we started translating um, the most commonly used messages uh, way back, some few months back, uh, I think early this year. And at that point, we had like um, less than 5%, were barely 5% in the translation uh, stats. So um, I got pinged by Amir that we could actually like come together and improve on the translations and probably um, complete the 100% um, messages. Yeah, that was really, um, you know, it was a very good pointer and I was really not sure whether we would be able to actually do it um, within that period that he mentioned. Because he said we can actually do it within one month. I was skeptical, but you know, we gave it a try and with the you know, influence of him and um, my community members, we were able to get started so we started by just um, organizing um, virtual workshops to discuss more on um, how we can, you know, come together and translate all those messages. Then we started by translating the usual messages that are on the homepage. Um, we organized workshops virtually to um, help people with um, account creation and stuff like that. Then we encountered so many challenges. I would like to talk about the challenges and how we overcome them. So one of the challenges we had was um, terminologies. We had challenges with internet connectivity for people who wanted to translate but um, do not have the proper um, tools or internet connection to be able to complete as everything is um, translated online. And then the other one had to do with um, getting the right people. We know there are many people who understand the language very well. They can speak fluently, but when it comes to translating, especially um, media wiki messages, they are quite technical. One of the examples, uh, um, when we we're trying to translate something like media, most of them were looking at it from a journalism <laughs> perspective. Like when they talk about media, they are talking about TV and radio station. So media in this context was about like, you know, Wikimedia and the media like files, folders and stuff like that. 
So those were the challenges some of them had. We had to like debate and argue to be able to like sort these things out. So those were the challenges we had. And yeah, we organized the community by um, creating a Telegram group. And um, we were lucky to have Amir join us on the Telegram group. I crowded, uh, I looked for other community members from different platforms like the Bani communities on Facebook and Twitter. We also had uh, community members from uh, University of Education, Viniba, who were very like interested in the translation because they studied Dagbani. And that was how we organized our community. And our achievement, yes, the achievement, I'm really excited to talk about that because we did this uh, unexpectedly. We were able to translate all the 100% messages within the shortest possible time, I think, less than uh, six months, probably. And that was quite a huge success for us as a community. And we were also able to um, write articles alongside the translation. So that was really helpful. And as we speak now, because we've been able to translate all the messages, we have managed to apply for the subdomain for the band language. And I'm happy to share that uh, our application to be approved as a, to, to have our own subdomain got approved recently. And hopefully we should have a full language Wikipedia in the next couple of days from today. So I'm really excited about that. That is one of the biggest achievements. And through that, we were able to also um, apply for a user group. And we, I'm happy to share that we are now a recognized affiliate user group of Wikimedia Foundation. Um, this part, uh, who helped us? So one key person who helped us was Amir, who is part of this presentation. Thank you so much for all the time. He was with us all through from the beginning, helping um, um, translated create the account, helping with uh, terminologies and, you know, always pinging us on corrections and um, updates regarding the statistics, which keeps us always like pushing because when we hear that, oh, now you are at 30%, then it makes us feel really excited and we keep pushing. We knew that we we're getting really close until we ended the 100 messages. So Amir has been a key figure in this uh, success journey. We also had um, Karimba Asani and some other um, master's students who are you know, currently studying Dagbani at the University of Education, Winneba. They also helped us with um, terminologies. And then we had the general community who helped in so many ways. Now, how we decided on terminologies, it was really um, uh, inspiring to see many people coming out with ideas as to how we can create terminologies which will last forever on Wikimedia. Um, for example, um, folder, we don't have anything like that in Dagbani. File, we don't have such terms in Dagbani. There are several Wikimedia messages that we did not know how to call them if you ask me. And we never thought of it, like even on the internet in general, I never thought of like having a term for like something like create an account or user account password. So when we discovered these terminologies, we came together and we uh, decided that everyone should, you know, suggest, uh, you know, how we should pronounce these words or and term them in MediaWiki. So through that, we're able to um, discover so many ways to create words or terms for the media wiki uh, the media wiki messages and luckily for us we had um, people who you know also do translation in other platforms so they helped us and we also used um, Jehovah Witness their website they had a lot of um, content regarding um, messages like this in Dagbani. So those were one of the platforms that we utilized to be able to, um, you know, determine these terminologies. So that was how we decided on terminologies. Next slide. 
Yes, so why is this important to us as a community? For me, um, you know, being a contributor to the English Wikipedia for some time now, I realized that we could also, um, you know, have our own wiki if we continue to translate these messages. Without them, we will not be able to have a Wikipedia um, for the Dagban language. So it was important for us to translate and decide on these terms and terminologies so that we can use them in future. And even when we are not there, our generations would know how um, to, you know, say, create an account in Dagbani or probably have a name for something like a folder. So we decided, one of the things that we decided on which was really exciting was like folder and file. We have Lahabal um, Kwelegu for file and then Lahabal Kwel Jual for um, folder. These things are uncommon, you know. They are things that we haven't heard in probably in our lifetime, but since we started this, I was able to learn so many things along the way, and I've also improved my uh, knowledge in the Dagbani language. So um, this one, I think I may will talk about that later. Um, yeah, what we did on the translatewiki.net was helping volunteers or contributors to create their accounts and then helping them set up their language for Dagbani. And then the next thing was just to start translating um, messages. Next slide. Okay, so this also would be a, a section that I may will come in to talk about what goes behind the scenes of creating a new um, Wikipedia and how to submit a new language Wikipedia. Yeah, but I can talk about this because I did that for the Dagbani. Um, I sent a message to the language committee requesting for uh, an application form and I was, um, sub I, I got a support from um, John from Wikimedia um, Norway. So we basically decided on the domain, how we want the domain to look like, and we also looked at the ISOs on Wikimedia, the language code for Dagbani, how it is, and then we decided to uh, also, you know, create a new logo. We had an old logo, which were, you know, it looked really old, so we redesigned a new logo and then add it to the application. And basically we added information about what we've done um, over the past couple of years. Um, some of them were aside creating articles in the incubator. We also, you know, ran contests which helped us to, you know, really uh, improve on our uh, quality, the quality of the articles. And we also have a quality assessment on the incubator, which allows us to determine how our articles should look like. So basically it was locally designed and this was, these were some of the things that we used for our application. And I'm happy that uh, we got approved finally. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, yeah, so, so maybe... this is this is more or less uh, yeah the end of uh, Sadik's part, but uh, uh, I will just quickly um, add to the parts that you mentioned about uh, Translate Wiki and about the language committee. So Translate Wiki is uh, the website where the translation of the user interface of um, Media Wiki is done. Media Wiki is the software platform which runs Wikimedia and uh, many other related sites, and uh, uh, I'm one of the maintainers of Translate Wiki. And uh, really, uh, like I really liked what you said about this, that the idea is you just create an account and you just start translating. This is the intention. Occasionally, people complain that some things there are difficult, uh, difficult to understand, difficult to start translating. Uh, we are constantly looking for ways to improve this, uh, the maintainers of Translate Wiki. I will mention several things that we've done um, over the last few years to improve this. Uh, we're constantly looking for feedback about that. We really try to be available for people. 
to support uh, you, the translators, the excellent volunteers who make, who make these translations. So if anything is difficult to do, uh, please tell us. Uh, we'll do our best to make it smoother and easier to just create an account, log in, and start translating. And about the language committee, I am also a member of the language committee. Uh, the language committee uh, is a group of volunteers, uh, several uh, volunteers, uh, mostly people with some knowledge in linguistics from several countries. Uh, and the language committee mainly approves uh, the creation of new domains of uh, Wikipedia. One of the requirements uh, when creating a new domain is translating the most used messages. But we also try to check the quality of the incubator and uh, we usually try to ask uh, an external expert who was not involved in the incubator and who knows the language to check it. Uh, and that's about it. If you have everything translated and you have a va valid ISO code for the language and you have an active community and it was checked by an expert, uh, that's pretty much when it's uh, uh, created. Uh, it may take a few days until the actual domain is created, but uh, I'm pretty sure that for your language, this will be fully done. So yet again, congratulations. You've done a, a, a really brilliant uh, work here. Uh, and uh, yeah, any, any anything else before we move to the next part about the Tiap uh, language? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I think maybe you, you have, if you have any question for me or like, you know, well, if you could just give one tip, uh, one uh, suggestion to anybody else uh, who wants to organize something like this for, uh, like, your, what, what's special, not actually special uh, about your language, um, is that there's almost nothing else online uh, in this language. There are no other apps, there are almost no other websites, um, but yet, you want to create a Wikipedia, so you need the terminology, you need the translation, you need some volunteer work. Uh, so there are actually quite a lot of languages like this. So this is not actually special. Uh, it may be special, you know, when you, when you compare this to a big language like Spanish or French or Russian, but actually there are thousands of languages which are in your situation. So could you give like one suggestion uh, to any other people who want to organize something like this for their language? Yeah, okay. So I think um, that is very important. Um, what, before I even come to that, I would like to talk about the Dagban. Yes, it's, it is true that the Dagban language is less uh, visible on the internet. Um, sometimes we try to find information online and we can barely find one. And one of the examples or recent challenges we faced were when we were selected for the um, you know, abstract Wikipedia projects for focus languages. One of the languages were Dagbani that was selected and we were looking for a language corpus on the internet. We searched through, we couldn't find one. And that was really disturbing. It was really something that we like thought we could have easily found, but it didn't happen like that. So yeah, Dagban language is less known, but we have over 3 million people like native speakers in Ghana and for a language like that, I think we can do better. There should be more information if more than 3 million uh, speak this kind of language um, in a country like Ghana. That's a huge number. So why don't we you know, create platforms or avenues to improve these uh, languages, not just Dagbani, many other uh, good languages so we can have these information or resources available in, La in Dabani or other languages or local languages uh, on the internet. For me, as a regional ambassador, um, I focus on, at Art and Family, I focus on indigenous communities. I am interested in just helping um, local language languages in Ghana, especially Wikipedia communities, to improve, um, you know, on the content they have, existing content, and also the language visibility on the internet in general. So for my suggestion or recommendation, if you ask me, is if you are someone who is also interested in doing something like this for your language, you would probably want to consider um, people who study the language in the first place. Sometimes it's difficult to get um, like ordinary volunteers, excuse me to say, 
um, to contribute because they don't have the required expertise and they don't have the, the motivation to continue. So getting people who really know the language and are interested in the language is very important. That was what we did. We contacted students, we contacted Dagbani uh, lecturers and uh, people who translate Dagbani as professionals. We contacted them and that was the um, breakthrough. That was where we get a lot of people coming in to support us. So community is very important when you are embarking on such projects and you should also pay attention to people who um, have the technical skills, example, what Amir uh, is doing. You need somebody like that who will be helping you with. I was even surprised. There are certain things that I don't expect him to know because he doesn't understand the language, but he seems to know it even more than some of us. So this is what I'm talking about. It's like the technical aspect of it. So if A plus B is equal to this, he'll come and ask us why A plus B is equal to another thing, you know, that kind of thing. So <laughs> I was really excited about, and I learned so many things from him, actually, I learned so many. And I understand that it's not just about speaking or translating the language. I also knew many people in the group or community who could do better in terms of translation. But when it comes to media wiki messages, I, I thought, I felt that I was somehow better than them because uh, they see the translation like they go directly with what they learn or how they know it without looking at how it is used for um, a place like um, Wikimedia uh, or Media Wiki. So that is all that I have to say. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. This is really funny. I know I, I absolutely don't know your language. Uh, I did manage to find a dictionary online and uh, I, I do have a degree in linguistics. Uh, so I, I kind of like when I see something written in a foreign language, I can make some educated guesses about like how words go together. Uh, just educated guesses. I don't really know the Gbani. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I do have like several years of experience with uh, the localization of media wiki. So I can also make some educated guesses about like which things should be similar and which things should be different. So it's just, you know, logic and smart guesses, but really the work is yours. Uh, and uh, I, I absolutely agree with your suggestion that you need to find uh, people who know the language well and who love it and, uh, uh, you know, to, to start and to lay the foundation for this. So I'll make a quick presentation of um, uh, Kambai's uh, part about Tiap. Uh, there will also be a separate video uh, by him. Uh, and um, uh, basically, what is the uh, Tiap language? It is spoken in uh, Nigeria. And um, Kambai contacted me in November 2020. Uh, and he asked to start uh, translating into this language. I ran a quick check. I saw that this is a valid language, so I configured uh, Translate Wiki to support it. So he started the, the translation on November 19th. Already less than a month after that, uh, on December 17th, it was done. It was incredibly quick. It's, it's really rare that something happens uh, uh, so quickly. Sometimes it takes several months. Sometimes it, take, it takes several years. But with uh, Kambai, it took less than a month uh, to complete this translation. This was really uh, brilliant. Um, so, and it's a relatively small language. It's very much a living language spoken by 130,000 people in Nigeria. So they formed a WhatsApp group. Uh, I was not there, uh, but um, I, I saw some other discussions, uh, some on Facebook and on, uh, tele on some Telegram groups. Um, and uh, they decided on uh, terminologies and uh, some uh, interested people uh, decided to participate in that um, to, to make things faster. And that, that, that's also a suggestion I like. Um, to make things faster, they translated the simplest, shorter messages first. Uh, this helped like, you know, boost the statistics uh, because you don't have to translate like everything in, in the sequence. I will speak about the sequence in a few minutes. Uh, so making the shorter messages first give you some kind of a foundation and you, you can do like 10, 20% of messages which are shorter and simpler. And uh, the longer ones later, again, makes, makes perfect sense to me. Um, they found some uh, existing terms 
but they also had to create some new ones. And uh, several people suggested different things. Uh, it was uh, like, I've, again, I followed some of these discussions uh, in some groups. It was really nice seeing people discuss this. And uh, there is also a Tiap language board. So despite being a relatively small language, there is a group of experts who advise on uh, how to do this translation correctly. And uh, some of these were submitted and th these people, these experts like them, which is of course great. And uh, they also used uh, some uh, uh, sensible uh, comparisons to related languages that the Tiap speakers know, English of course, and also Hausa and Yoruba and Igbo, which are the three major languages spoken in uh, Nigeria. Uh, also, from the Ju language, it, it's written JJU. It's a language closely related to Tiap, so they found some existing words in that closely related language, and they reused them, such as website, Yomente. Uh, so that's how they came up with uh, terminology. Uh, and uh, um, like, wh why why is it important to do this? So this helps younger people who use computers a lot to see that, yeah, it's actually possible to use computers in, in this language. Uh, it makes sense to be literate, not just in English or some other major languages, but in this language, which is their own, which they speak already. Um, and uh, this develops confidence and uh, this uh, really helps a language not go instinct. And if a language goes extinct, that's a shame because that's a whole culture and that's the whole group cultural memory that goes extinct. Uh, so that, that's one of the ways to preserve this. And uh, for myself, from Amir, uh, this is not Kambay speaking, this is Amir speaking. Um, I will also mention that developing a terminology for talking about um, Wikipedia and uh, these terms and media wiki and about computers in general, this helps you create a community because if you, if you have your own words for speaking about things like uh, encyclopedia, page, category, uh, image, uploading, this helps you create a, your own community, which is not dependent on English, uh, which is your own, and uh, with friends who write Wikipedia articles and can speak about them as, as if it's like a usual thing that you do every day. Um, so I, I've been also following some uh, follow-ups that uh, they've been doing. Uh, there is a Telegram group uh, for uh, TIAP language learners and uh, researchers and uh, uh, Wikipedia writers. And they are writing articles on the incubator. Uh, I see new articles created every few days, which is great. Um, and uh, what can be better? So some incentives. Uh, so getting a connection to the web can be difficult in these countries. So some support to get actually connected technically, that may be useful. Uh, some support for devices, some support for training. Now, uh, uh, again, uh, this is a comment from myself, Amir. Um, I do try to provide the training in my spare time, uh, but maybe this could be increased. Uh, so that's really it. Uh, uh, again, very unfortunately, you come by, cannot join us. He has some technical problems. I will try to say thank you. Uh, I will probably say this incorrectly. Uh, so ZY bet, uh, something like this is uh, thank you, I hope, uh, but I, I hope you can also watch uh, Levy's own video. Uh, finally, um, something just from uh, myself, the final part, uh, this is a little bonus, my cat, uh, but the really, uh, this is, this part is somewhat technical, but please don't run away uh, because uh, here I will try to present how we are trying to make the translation of the most used messages even easier for the translators. Because we have here two examples of people who managed to complete the translation for their languages, but evidently this is quite difficult for a lot of people. Uh, and we are trying to make this easier. Uh, so here's what we are trying to do. So first of all, what are the most used messages? The most used messages, uh, it's a statistical thing that we, uh, started doing several years ago. We first tried to do this in 2011 uh, to help find a, a small number of the most important strings that have to be translated uh, in order to use uh, Wikipedia and related websites. 
Uh, and this was just this was just a statistic. We just uh, ran a technical uh, thing that checked which messages are shown most often. First, it was done in 2011. Then it was redone in 2015. And since then, it was maintained manually. Now, what does it mean that it was maintained manually? Uh, initially, it was 600 uh, messages in 2015. Then it was expanded to 790, which is quite a lot. Now, the idea be behind this was to, uh, to make it like intentionally a bit too big and then remove some things. And then uh, the actual removal only began in 2019. Uh, currently we are at 574 messages. I will, I'm going to try to make it even smaller but I'll speak about this in a few minutes. Now, what are the problems with doing this with this like dry statistics data driven approach? The idea is, is that you just get the most important messages, but then you order them by frequency. And frequency, like it makes sense, but when you, when you are actually a translator, this is not very convenient for your experience as a translator because the messages look just you know, all over the place. They are, the sequence is random. They are not grouped by topic. It also includes included <laughs> some uh, messages that were used often technically, but they were not actually seen by many users. Uh, all kinds of technical things uh, that for technical reasons are very frequently loaded from the software, but they're not actually seen. Um, also, the list of the most used messages is maintained separately from the actual code. So it quickly gets out of synchronization. Uh, and this, this actually happens often that the message was removed from the code, but it was not removed from the most used list. Um, it, would, it, it was only removed later, uh, and translators had to waste the time with that. So um, I was removing uh, quite a lot of things. Uh, what, for example, so the, the XIF tags, it's a, like, it's a very technical photographic uh, thing. Tooltips, tooltips are only shown on the desktop. They're never shown on mobile. And these days, most people connect from mobile devices, so they don't really see the tooltips. So they're not actually most used. Uh, a lot of messages for logs and page info, these two tools, are very useful for administrators, but there are very few administrators in every wiki. And for most users, this is not really necessary. And also all kinds of technical messages um, that were like technically frequent, but not actually very necessary. Also some other changes that we made, uh, we improved the documentation, both the general documentation uh, for translators and also documentation of particular difficult messages like, I speak to a lot of Translate Wiki translators like Sadiq and like uh, Kambai and many others. Uh, if I notice that they report problems about certain messages repeatedly, I try to improve the message itself or at least the documentation about that particular message. Um, I manually added some common messages that are frequently used on mobile devices and on the main page, uh, which were technically maybe not the most frequent, but uh, uh, they are very visible. Uh, because the main page is usually the most visible page on wikis. Uh, I also reordered the messages to make them um, uh, easier for translators. The most simple example is like name, names of months, January, February, March, and so on. Initially, they were just spread around uh, randomly. Uh, so I just grouped them. That's a very simple change. And I, I did a few similar things like that. Um, and uh, just another little bonus. This is not really about most used, but it's about uh, uh, translation in general. We, um, if you translate like beyond most used messages, if you want to translate everything, that's more than 20,000 messages. That's pretty huge. But uh, we tried to make this even easier. So we split them to several groups. So uh, we have the main group and we have the advanced group and fundraising and so on. We even have a legacy group for things that are technically still used, but uh, are not developed any longer. So uh, it's like the lowest priority. So if you don't translate the legacy messages, it's really not a big deal because it's not likely that anybody will use it anyway. Uh, and uh, now what impact did this have? Now, these numbers may not look very impressive, but like I looked how many languages managed to complete uh, the translation of the most used messages by year and graduate to core media wiki. So you can see that uh, I'm not sure what happened in 2018 that 13 languages managed to uh, uh, graduate. Maybe it was because some of them were supported by some kind of an academic project. That's probably what happened. Uh, but you see that in 2019, it was just three languages, which is very low. 
uh, in 2020, it was seven, which is an improvement. Uh, in 2021, we are now in the middle of 2021. We already have eight languages. Um, so I can hope that uh, maybe all the improvements that we were making uh, are actually making it easier to complete this. Uh, I, I really sincerely hope that uh, that's the case. Um, and uh, I noticed a few other languages that are already getting close to um, graduation from uh, uh, this uh, like initial translate wiki list to actual uh, usability in media wiki. So good luck with that. Uh, so I do think that there's some impact, um, but we want to do something even bigger. Now, I discussed this with a few people informally. Uh, this is mostly my idea. Uh, I haven't started implementing it yet. Uh, it's just an exploration at this point. Uh, but here's an idea uh, of what I want to do to improve this. Two things. One, to create a glossary of terms. Because currently, when people translate, they encounter terms like template, page, upload, category, which may seem simple to people who speak English or French or Russian, but for new languages coming in who don't have these terms very often, they are quite difficult. And then you just see a message and you see this word and you don't know how to translate this. Um, so my idea was to create a list of, this, of these terms, both special media wiki terms like template and category, um, and also maybe even some general computer terms like file and upload. And uh, suggest that people translate this glossary first to prepare to prepare a list of just you know words, and then once this is translated, get uh, to translating of the actual most used uh, messages because by then you will already know the difficult words that you need to do. So I haven't started doing this yet. Uh, I'm now at the exploration stage. I'm I'm looking. Uh, I'm I'm trying to compile a list of common words. I'm trying to look at some other glossaries that we have in the Wikimedia world. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope to have some updates about this before the end of 2021. And the other one, the other idea that I have is make handpicked uh, most used groups. And um, the handpicked most used groups, uh, I want to gradually stop using the pure statistical approach where you just count the number of messages uh, and count like which messages are most frequently used and just handpick them by topic. So for example, main page would probably be an important topic. Uh, editing a simple page in wiki text and in visual editor and on a mobile device would be such a uh, topic. Um, th these are really the most important scenarios. Uh, reading the page, uh, editing the page in several tools, uh, maybe also page history, which is a pretty important thing. Uh, maybe, maybe also talk pages, uh, maybe some administration tasks, but really I want to cap this at 500 messages, uh, hopefully even less than 500. And eventually I hope to retire the most used list. Uh, and I want to manage this, these groups as part of MediaWiki itself and not as a separate uh, configuration in uh, Translate Wiki. This will help uh, people to, uh, maintain this in better synchronization. So these are really the ideas for the foreseeable future for the next few months of uh, things that uh, I plan to do with uh, hopefully with help from uh, other media wiki developers and uh, translate wiki maintainers. And that's really it. So thanks a lot. Um, sorry again about the technical problems. Uh, thanks a lot to Sadiq and uh, Kambai for the presentations. And uh, good luck to everybody who translates in Translate Wiki, and uh, please do come to us for uh, support. We will really be happy to help everybody translate and make it easier to translate everything. Thank you. Thank you.